Hi, everyone. In the driver's seat today, we're talking about consumer insights and artificial intelligence and how these technologies can drive results for dealers. Joining us is Tracy Fred, Senior Vice President of Cox Automotive Dealer and Lender Solutions. Tracy leads optimization and go-to-market strategies for the many innovative Cox Automotive solutions that serve dealers, lenders, and OEMs. Tracy joins us today from Chicago. Welcome back to In the Driver's Seat, Tracy. Thanks, Emma. It's so nice to see you again. Thank you for having me here. It's great to have you back. So Tracy, why don't you kick off by sharing what's new at Cox Automotive? Yeah, thank you. What I'm most focused on and excited about right now is our new retail vision. And I'm excited about it because it solves many of the challenges dealers are facing right now. Our new vision combines three powerful capabilities, omni-channel shopping experiences, deep consumer insights, and our incredible Cox Automotive performance management team. And that's a combination that dealers can't get anywhere else. First, omni-channel shopping experiences. We know from our recent research that car buyers are asking for this. According to Cox Automotive's latest car buying journey study, 43% of recent car buyers used an omni-channel uh, experience approach, and 71% of consumers are likely to complete their next purchase that exact way. And Cox Automotive meets that consumer demand by empowering dealerships with the only true omni-channel capability in the automotive retail industry today. Second, what makes our retail vision even more special is the meaningful insights we bring to the table. These predictive insights, which are aggregated from data from seven out of 10 in-market shoppers using Cox Automotive's AutoTrader, Kelly Blue Book, and Dealer.com create the personalized experiences today's car buyers expect. And then third, I mentioned our performance management. It's all backed by Cox Automotive's industry expertise. I talk with a lot of dealers who understand that they need omni-channel experiences and consumer insights, but they don't always know how to bring it all together in their dealership. Our performance managers, who all have years of automotive retail experience, guide dealers along at every step to help them implement processes to utilize these tools in a best practice way and to help evolve these practices to help dealers through every industry change and challenge. And I couldn't be more excited about helping dealers win with the unbeatable combination of these three capabilities. There's a lot of change in the industry to navigate right now. And at Cox Automotive, we believe it's our responsibility as true partners to guide our clients along the path to success. You know, Tracy, when we caught up in the driver's seat last fall, you spoke about consumers wanting one consistent experience, one connected experience, despite the fact that the consumer is building their shopping experience along multiple pathways and platforms. And those stats you've just mentioned from the latest Cox Automotive Car Buyer Journey study really confirm all of that, that consumer affinity for the omni-channel approach. And you're right, there really is a lot of change to navigate right now. One of those changes is the influx of AI, a hot topic in not just automotive, but all of retail. What is your advice to dealers who ask about implementing AI in their business? Yeah, I get asked that question a lot. And there are really three pieces of advice I'd give. Seems like I'm thinking in threes today. Um, so keep asking questions, seek out predictive insights, and keep an eye on your data sources. So let me explain a little bit about what I mean by each of these. First, keep asking questions about AI. We've repeatedly seen that the dealerships who view new technologies with genuine curiosity and a willingness to implement them in their business are the ones who win over the longer term. 20 years ago, this question was about internets and websites. Today it's AI. Tomorrow it'll be something else most of us can't even imagine today. <clears throat> The key to knowing which trends to embrace and which ones to let pass is understanding what your customer wants and how the tool of the moment can deliver upon their expectations. Which brings me to my second piece of advice, which is seek out AI tools that deliver predictive insights. Actionable, predictive consumer insights are how dealers can actually use AI to really understand what a customer needs and wants. And so what we mean at Cox Automotive by insights is 
consumer information you couldn't realistically uncover by manually reading through recent activity in their customer profile or emails, things like their true down payment range and their likelihood to buy. And these insights, when done right, empower dealers to change the buying and ownership experience for the better by delivering a true understanding of what each consumer needs. And let me, let me give you an example of what I mean by that. We all know, for those of us who have been in the business for a while, um, that dealers have historically used a four square to work deals for years. It's one of the perpetual tools in our business. But with Cox Automotive's deal-making solution, Deal Central, we've taken that foundational tool and we've evolved it not only to be more digital, but also to have these consumer insights we've been talking about embedded within it. And with this insight enhanced digital Foursquare, you not only have the information your customer submitted on their lead form, but you also have information that they didn't share, like what their true max monthly payment could be, or even other vehicles they're considering. And this is a good place to talk about my third piece of advice, which is to pay attention to your data sources. Your insights are only as good as the data that they're sourced from. Old data and bad data will give you old, bad insights. And that's why a key priority for us at Cox Automotive is providing our clients with the most robust consumer database and delivering the insights in a way that enables dealers to take action in real time. So true, Tracy. And I think the kind of AI you're talking about, you know, you can see how it would lead to a better understanding of expectations between customer and dealer, you know, making the whole process a more satisfying experience for both sides, not to mention saving time, the predictive insights tools you've mentioned, helping streamline the process. That also makes for a much better experience. I want to ask you about another area I hear a lot of buzz about in relation to AI, and that's driving efficiency what is your perspective on how AI can help dealers be more efficient and productive? That's a great question. And I'm going to move off of my threes because here it's where I really have kind of two things that we're thinking about here, um, both of which help great people be even better, um, improving the quality of customer responses and reducing repetitive tasks through automation. So first, you know, let's talk about using AI to improve the quality of responses. I think many people probably think about Gen AI tools like ChatGPT as the solution here, and ChatGPT is one solution. Gen AI, Gen AI has a lot of potential, but it also still requires a lot of human intervention. As we've all read and heard, AI makes mistakes. And I don't know about you, but um, I don't want glue pizza, for example, as AI search results recently suggested. And, you know, while most of us probably just get a laugh from bizarre recipe recommendations, like the glue pizza example, there's a lot more at stake when it comes to customer communication. And so that's why at Cox Automotive, we believe human intervention is required for customer communications generated by AI. Uh, Gen AI is at its most powerful when it's combined with human expertise to make real people more efficient. One place we've started piloting the use of Gen AI with that in mind is our VIN solution CRM, where it's helping dealers improve the quality of responses to customers. But the tool isn't sending messages without salespeople being aware of the responses or approving these responses. We've implemented it to intentionally continue to involve real people. I also mentioned automation. This is a key focus area for us in, at Cox in terms of driving efficiency. Across every dealership department, automation can put repetitive tasks on cruise control, thereby enabling dealers to do more with less. Again, the goal of implementing this technology is not to replace people, but instead make it easier and faster for people to do their jobs. And along these lines, we're actually piloting some really exciting F&I automation capabilities right now that cut a lot of the manual work required by F&I managers and help them get to the best possible deal faster. And then all of this AI works hand in hand with the insights we were just discussing. Gen AI and automation save you time, and then insights guide you on how to make the most of that time. Well, great examples. I mean, I love those examples of how to use AI in such a smart, efficient way. As always, Tracy, so many amazing new things happening at Cox to help dealers understand 
what consumers truly need and want and ensuring all doors are open for the consumer to interact with the dealer, whether that's a physical door or a digital pathway. It's been so great having you with us today, Tracy. It's a tradition, as you know, to close out each episode with our zero to 60 challenge. Over the next 60 seconds, we'd like to give our viewers a chance to get to know you a little better. So are you ready for the challenge? I think so, let's see. <laughs> You've done it before, you can do it again. <laughs> Okay, right. question <laughs> question number one. What was the first job you ever had? Okay, so um, I always wanted to work from a very young age. And um, where I grew up, one of the jobs that you could get at a young age was detasseling corn. And so that was my very first job and taught me some really valuable lessons about what hard work actually looks like amazing. Do you think about it this time of year, especially? <laughs> I think about it. Yes. Every time we have some of that good Midwestern sweet corn this time of year, I vividly recall those days of detasseling. Yeah, I bet. I love that example. Okay. Question number two, what are you listening to right now in your car? So more so than um, listening in my car, I tend to listen to books when I go to bed at night to help me sleep. And one of the ones I listened to most recently was a book called uh, The Women by Kristen Hanna. Um, and it was a book about the experiences of women during the Vietnam War, which was something I didn't really know a lot about previously. And it really gave me a real appreciation for how much the world has evolved in terms of valuing the contribution of women. I'm not sure it was the best book to fall asleep to, but, um, but it was, it was a great, a great read. Great. Listen. I'm making a note of that right now. Okay. Last question. Um, future question. What is one thing you are looking forward to doing when you retire? Um, well, there's so many, there's so many things, but one of the things that that's top of mind for me right now is I recently had the opportunity to work with some high school students, juniors that were going into their senior year. And this was a group of students who aspired to be the first in their families to attend college. And they had all of the qualifications to get admitted to college, but they didn't have the resources or the know-how to actually help them with the college application process and all that goes along with that financial aid and, and all of that. And, um, and that was such a rewarding experience, helping those young people to achieve those kind of aspirations. And I hate thinking about young people who put all of the work into achieving their goals, but may, have, may fail to get to the, the end result of going to college without folks to help them with that last mile of the process. So that's something I'd like to do more of in retirement when I have more free time. Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised because I know you're a big supporter of mentorship. So... Makes so important. Sense. Yeah. So, so important. Um, well, thank you again uh, for meeting with us today, Tracy, and we will see you all next time for In the Driver's Seat.